visit with us today um, but we're going to start out with our pledge and the four-way test and the mission and since George you're right there <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation with liberty and justice for all before we test the things that we say, think, say, or do. First, is, is it the truth? Second, is it the truth? Third, will it be a good will and benefits? Will we benefit from what we serve? Third, is it the truth? Thank you, sir. And let me clear that out because otherwise, every time work wants me, we're going to get dinged. Uh, welcome, visitors and guests. We have. Well, come on in. Hi, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Corey Kitchen here. Corey Kitchen's at the club. Well, welcome. Right yes. here. We have a spot right there for you. In fact, we are just at the point on our agenda where we are welcoming visitors and guests. You might as well stay standing and go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, my name is Will Abbott. Uh, I work with Junior Achievement. So, and I just moved back to uh, Arizona. I got to grow up here. Uh, I saw on the program that the Boy Scouts are talking today. Yeah, of course. Awesome. Uh, I got my Eagle Scout here in this council, which is Ooh, awesome. So, lots of Boy Scouts to do their team with uh, And just excited to, to meet and get a hang out. So, welcome. Well, yeah, hey, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. And how about you? Stand and introduce oh, yourself. Oh, They're nice. 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 Everybody can have a seat. Here we go. <laughs> Um, I'm Mary Kate. I am with the Boy Scouts of America, Great Same Canyon thing. Council, Same. and I oversee uh, the Chandler, Awatuki, and then Two south eight. down to Route 8, across over to Yuma. Thank you. Happy to be here. Okay, wonderful. And we also have a visitor with us today, our, our assistant governor. Mr. John Lyons, who's in from the Sun Lakes Club. And we have, oh, sorry, visitor in from Queen Creek, Miss Diana Hutchison. She got a visitor. <laughs> have I got Is that that to I think so. <laughs> right? Happy dollars. Who's happy today? <laughs> Mr. Dave. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah and I are officially retired. Yeah. <laughs> We're 36 here at age 47. So now that I'm retired, I'm going to give 83 cents. <laughs> so $83 for that. Aww. And then. 
growing up in Oklahoma, Mickey Mantle being a Yankee. I will always be a Yankee. So Sarah and I got to go to the game yesterday. So I'll give another 17 to round off the $100. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dave. Always is very generous. Mr. Lyons, I'll take that from yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> this is like being at home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ten, 10 happy dollars uh first of all five of that paid there congratulations awesome um and then five dollars should be here with the global order club this morning well we are very happy to have you now the biggest question dave is when is tara putting in her application <laughs> it <is>. okay. <laughs> it's on the website it's ready to three go. and a half minutes by the way <laughs> I wouldn't be in my presidential role right. if I didn't ask. All right, anybody? Uh, let's go down the line. Uh, I'm going to start with Dave. Down the line, this from this end, uh, I'm privileged. I, I hear it's National Burrito Day, and I'm really yeah. happy about that. I'll give you twenty dollars. <laughs> Is that your burrito shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Debbie, um, I owe him a happy 20, uh, 10 of it for a nice full room and multiple guests, uh, Eagle Scout among us. And the other 10 is because Nate and I, my son, went to uh, a D backs game on Sunday, and it just happened to be a day we won. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Mr. Kurt. You might guess that I'm going to talk to you again <laughs> about Caitlin Clark, <laughs> who uh, gave maybe the most uh, unbelievable individual performance of an athlete that I've ever seen in her 41 point uh, barrage against LSU. Uh, and second uh, year in a row as the Naismith Award winner. So 10 bucks. Awesome. We love to see women in sports doing so, yes. so well. So yeah. thank also you. one of the highest watched games in quite some time. Is it, correct? it was by almost double. I love it. I love it. Of men's or women. Yeah. Yes. Thank oh. you, Kurt, for, for supporting her and, and bringing it to the club's attention. I had a daughter who was an athlete, but let's not go there. Yep. <laughs> Miss Donna. I knew Kurt was going to celebrate Caitlin Clark, so I have to I have to throw in 10 for the bereavement that I feel for my LSU Tigers. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing that you are in mortuary sciences because you understand the movement very well. I have to take care of myself. They were within a sprained ankle of winning that game. So they were great. Awesome. Anybody on this side of the room? Well, I'll put in 10 bucks because U of A sucked. <laughs> Although in their suckiness, I was surprised they lost by five points. So, <laughs> <laughs> by three or four of their seniors are leaving, so they're going to suck next year, too. So, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> they were winning when we went and had a lovely time at Oso, and then I figured they were losing because they weren't showing them on the TV. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then I will finish up with uh, $5 happy dollars, Mr. George. Uh, I had the privilege and the honor of taking my father and his wife out to dinner on Tuesday for his birthday. We had another birthday, too, uh, earlier. What, last week, Jack? Monday? Birthday? Yes, I did. And how many, do we say how many years? 80, 81? <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Okay. So hopefully she'll be coming back and taking food orders, right? She's only taken um, drink orders. So I kind of moved the agenda up so that we can talk about all of that. She doesn't interrupt Abby. Uh, so district conference, who needs to go to district conference? Who Everybody. wants to go to district conference? Everybody. Right? Everybody, Everybody wants to go. Parking? Yeah. Or, or we go and pick up the bus. Oh, did you sign up for the buses? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Well, then we will find out that information for you. Uh, so that's for busing. 
Uh, we're driving down. Uh, after the meeting, let's go ahead and get you signed up. Does anybody else need to sign up yet for District Market? And we can go ahead and take the orders. So for those of you in the room who don't know, uh, our district uh, is the basically central Arizona up all the way to Nevada. Uh, we go all the way from Lake Havasu. We've got uh, a club out in Las Vegas and then Maricopa County and so on. And then we've got another district below us. Uh, we are doing a two district conference where we are doing a, a meeting with uh, a our district, I'm going to call it a sister district, down in uh, Sonora. And so our district conference this year is in Puerto Pinesco. I know, it's going to be a fun time. You could come back to Rotary out here and join the district conference and have a blast. I, yeah, it's going to be very cool. They have, they have all the uh, resorts and so on. There are discounted rates for the Rotarians. That's all on the website. If you'll notice, uh, everything is linked on the agenda. So right where it says district conference, you can click right there and you'll have the whole page and everything you need to know about the conference. It's going to be a really cool time. If you don't want to drive down yourself, we, as, as Dave and Tara are doing, we have um, transportation going down. We've got a couple of um, passenger vans and, and so on, so that everybody can go as a group and then you don't have to worry about drinks and all the extra challenges. <laughs> Uh, District Conference State, May, May 2nd, which is a Thursday, and then ends on Sunday. And if you want to go down early, there is a golf event on Thursday. So you want to go, to, you want to go down on Wednesday. There is going to be a really cool uh, event out on the beach. Right, I think it's uh, Western Western Blitz something. I, I, I haven't seen that. Find any information. Hmm? Other than that. Yeah, Michelle was talking about it when we were at CLA, which Club Leadership Academy. So good time is going to be had by all. Uh, Miss Diana, for the group, for those who are still on the fence whether they can go or not, how much fun do you have at District Conference? We had a blast when we went. Well, all the times we go, we always do. They always have some sort of a hospitality evening where you get to mingle with all the different clubs, and, and it's really a one on one opportunity. Plus, not only are there fabulous events, there's individual events you can participate in when, mm -hmm. when you're not going to the meetings and you can enjoy it wherever you are. So. This is the blast. The speakers have always been phenomenal, very, very motivational. Uh, it's a great time to get to know everybody else in the district. And the one thing that I can say is that our district is very hands-on. When, when your district governor will know your name just from, hey, Pat, how are you? <laughs> right? It's, it's the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, it's it's very hands on and it's very personal and intimate in that sense. Just yeah. a couple observations. While meeting the incoming district governor and some of the district leadership uh, folks is, is genuinely nice, um, meeting other Rotarians and forming a, a friendship or two, maybe just for the next Rotary year, but it may be beyond that. Um, it is, it's your own uh, decision as to how much you want to network and enjoy and enjoy the time. But you look back afterwards and realize, no wonder I'm tired. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there is no uh, false, uh, bad rumor that went around at CF. There are no rotary breathalyzers with the logo right on the belt. <laughs> However, they've asked everybody to be responsible and have a great time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we do have people from Rotary International who are going to be at the conference. Yep. 
So moving on, Women for Women Tempe, uh, in our upcoming events, our April event is April 15th. The location has changed over to the Shermansler home. So it is on our GIFSUM site, it is on our website. Uh, this year's uh, um, Rotary Week of Service, right? This is going to be one of our events. So it is on the GIFSUM site for all to attend. So I strongly suggest signing up and so as we know how many people are coming. And it's at six. 6.30, I think 6 30, we started it, yep. Uh, the next thing we have, the link is uh, Run for Resilience. This is the Queen Creek uh, run that they are doing. It's a 5K. It is now open. Uh, registration is now open. And the Power Club has donated uh, $500 as to be a sponsor. Um, we're really hoping to get a good attendance again even if we're just walking it i mean i'm not going to be running clearly <laughs> i just hope i can keep up with donna <laughs> donna's a power horse when it comes to that so should be a fun time the the district is rallying around this event as well they're kind of making this their signature event for rotary week of service even though it's on the tail end of that week so again, you want to be able to see great participation, a good amount of members coming out. And then last, the date, uh, the date on that, yep, April, yep, April 27th. And the last thing is uh, Squeeze the Day. Squeeze the Day is an event that we had, that we had done um, last year. And... We collected oranges. I'm going to play the little video that we had uh, that we had done from last year, and then Jim is in the process of of working with the uh, uh, Grove again to see if if we can get it out. So let me do this real quick. And we're hoping to do it Saturday. Night. Yeah. <laughs> come on, come on, there we go. We have a quarter in. It was a really fun event. We had a really nice time. It was fun going out and collecting. We were able to pick up the crates from Midwest, bring them to the Grove, do all the picking out at the Grove, and then taking them back. So, uh, yeah, it was really nice. Let me stop this. What date is that again? Still waiting to hear back from Cheryl, who's the owner of the group. Oh, okay. I was That's there last weekend, uh, and she said, well, let me know. Uh, you know. She will let me know whether Friday or Saturday works better. I called her yesterday. She didn't answer. I left a message. I'm still waiting to hear from her. So we're kind of I'm hoping for Saturday. I'm hoping for Saturday. And it has to be done soon, because if yeah. the weather gets much, much warmer, then they start the rot on the trees. Um, so it, it would be perfect time to get them this weekend. It's going to be cool. I need to coordinate some of that as a pickup truck that can 
help us with the crates. Um, last year, I think we had Steve. <laughs> Or, or oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then have have pickers. So at this point, we, if I can get a show of hands of who's interested, we can contact you as soon as we get something mm -hmm. nailed down. Hopefully, I would like to do that today. Yeah, it's Saturday. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it's it's easy to do. Um, I, I would. If it's fifteen crates, I can shove those in the back seat of my car. Uh, no, they're uh, they're double size crates. They're much bigger than. Okay. Average, well, but, you know, yeah. they're, they're collapsible crates, so getting them from the yeah. Midwest Food Bank I, I to the Grove up. is one. Okay. Yeah, I could pick so. up. Yeah. All right, Hopefully so show of hands, if Saturday's going to work. Or Friday, or Saturday. Would become this, this weekend. This weekend. This weekend. This weekend. This weekend. Yeah. This weekend. Two days. Two yeah. days. Yep. Yeah. 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 Period, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I can't do much. Yeah. yeah. So it looks like you're going to have, we'll have a handful at least. Bring a friend. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or a grandchild. Or, or a grandchild you know, or a couple of grandchildren. A tall person. Grab, because... grab a neighbor. You know? yeah. yeah. Tall people are beneficial. Yeah. All of that stuff. All right. Put that on my shoulders. Yeah. Right. Uh, so the last thing I have before Abby comes on up is about fourth Thursday. Did we... Did we go ahead then and say that we wanted to do the Orpheum uh, event? Orpheus, the, yes. Or the Orpheum, which is, on yeah, which is on a Tuesday for and our... It's the 25th, event. if I remember. Okay. Or 26th. 26th. So we had the link before. I'll go ahead and get the link again. And then uh, should we buy individual tickets or do you want a show of hands and have the, the club purchase? Whatever is easiest. What's ever easiest? Yeah, but it would be a Tuesday event. Is it Tuesday or Thursday? It's a Tuesday. So the 23rd? 26th, right? 26th is a Friday. We're talking April, right? Talking April. Yeah. What's well, today? The 4th. So the 23rd is Friday. 23rd is Tuesday. I know, right? Did you have it on there? No, I didn't put it on there this time. So I can get tickets. We'll we'll figure it out, and and I'll send out an email to get a show of hands of how many people can attend. So what are we doing? So it would be going to uh, the Orpheus Men's Choir concert okay. in lieu of our fourth Thursday right. event. Okay. okay. All right. We are currently scheduled for a town hall that evening. Uh, leading up to the district conference council on legislation, I have a, every reason to believe that we'll get postponed. But uh, as as things stand now, that that evening at uh, that Tuesday, yes, at five thirty, uh, electors from the clubs that have appointed electors right. are supposed to be watching television as I explain all the changes. So. Uh, <laughs> I'll keep you posted. Okay. What is that that concert? I don't think the concert was until like seven. It's, it's, it's either it's seven or seven thirty. Yeah, and we said to be done. Would all that be done by seven? Oh. Did you talk that? It says it's thirtieth. What? It says for Velda Rose, it's thirtieth. Where does it say that? Okay. Thirtieth. Yeah, that's easy. That's easy. Okay. Right. Even better. Yeah. Even better. All you right. Email that. Okay. <laughs> so then let's go ahead and bring up our guest speaker. So Corey, you're gonna send it back out and then we'll just respond on that once you know. Yes. Can I stand up, up here? Is this where I stand? Yeah, Abby, but I'm I'm looking. I don't see the. Is it Rotary Club of Gilbert? Yep. The Rotary Club of Gilbert at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nope, that's not you. Okay, let's check. Yeah. Penny. Penny. Yes. Do you want to go to that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, great. 
Do you just want to link your computer up? Yeah. Here's the HDMI. Yeah. I hope you ordered a good breakfast. I sure did. <laughs> You're speaking, so it's like very cold. I look forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like being in town. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's good. Good yeah. spot. So, is this okay? Yeah, yes. good right there. Just watch the cord around your feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, the other side of the chair. <laughs> we are in church. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. There we go. Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? Good. Good. It's nice to see you as well. Uh, familiar faces. I think it's been about two years uh, since I spoke at your Rotary. Um, grown a lot since then. I think the first time I I spoke, I I faked it till I made it. Um, so um, my name is Abby. If you don't know who I am, I'm a field director for the Grand Canyon Council, Boy Scouts of America. Um, I've been with the council for about three years now, um, and it's been a, a blast. Um, just really getting to know the program, um, just seeing how impactful it is, getting to interact with the youth and adults who are just as passionate about um, instilling leadership in our youth has been fantastic and just kind of further strengthened my passion for, for what I do in working with the council. Um, just a little bit about me. I've lived here since I was 10 years old, so I consider myself a native. I got my bachelor's from ASU um, and currently getting my master's in clinical mental health counseling. Um, and so when I'm not working, oh, thank you. Um, I go to my internship. Um, so I'm usually home by like 9 p.m. Um, <laughs> getting my hours in. But that's also a passion of mine is, is mental health. So I know Chuck had mentioned he's doing something a little bit of something like that. So um, equally important. Um, but we'll we'll jump right into a little bit about Boy Scouts. Uh, this is our CEO, Andy Price. Pretty little face there. Not really much, but um, <laughs> um, so oftentimes when we think about scouting, you know, this is really the yeah some of the image that people have. Um, not super diverse. Mostly, actually, all male. <laughs> little pale as well. Um, and and. That's okay, that's, you know, that's our roots. Um, but this is really where, where we're at now. We're a diverse community, inclusive, really trying to promote that. Um, boys, young girls, young women, young men alike um, join in the fun activities that is scouting. So that is something that um, we're consistently focusing on is promoting scouting to all who want to join the program. Um, the mission of the Boy Scouts is to prepare young people to make moral and ethical choices over the course of their lifetime by instilling the values of the Scout Oath and the Scout Law. Um, sometimes when I present, I do like to have a little bit of fun. Do we have Eagle Scouts in the... Awesome. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Anybody else? Okay. Do you know the Scout Oath and the Scout Law? All right, let's see it. Trustworthy. The scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, brave, brave, clean, and reverent. Let's see if they nailed it. Wow. <laughs> Gold stars. Yeah. So, yeah. So, that that was not an or at the end. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's not that far. It's not that far from from Rotary. I'm also a Rotarian myself. Um, I'm a Rotarian at the Mesa Rotary. Um, and recently, I think I was voluntold to oversee the youth services yeah. committee. So that's been, yeah. thanks um, and fundraising as well. So that's exciting. Um, but uh, what he just recited was the 12 points of the scout law. Um, and this is really what we enforce that our youth and our adults to recite at every meeting, but also to live their lives by these values, um, as well as the scout oath. So duty to God and country, not necessarily enforcing anyone to believe in a certain God, but to have a faith because faith is important. Um, duty to country, be of service, uh, be of service to others, be of service of your community, um, help people at all times, keep themselves physically strong, mentally awake and morally straight, 
Um, that can mean a lot of things for youth. You know, it's maybe saying awful things that aren't as healthy or productive for us. Um, they can kind of curtail for what that means to them, but um, equally important. <laughs> Scout motto is be prepared. Um, and we exercise that in our professional lives as well. It's just be prepared for anything. Of course, it, it's part of the outdoor component. You don't want to go into the woods and camp without a tent or know how to start a fire. Won't make for a very fun camping experience, but things like that is being ready to go also prepares them for for their adulthood, um, just being properly prepared for just about anything. So we have quite a few programs, maybe some that you're familiar with, some that are might not be so popular. Um, so let's dive just a little bit about that. Uh, one of the most familiar, most popular is the Scouts BSA, which used to be called um, the Boy Scouts or Troops. Um, we call them Scouts BSA now because Girls are welcomed into the troop level program, which is fantastic. Um, most of our program focuses on these four aims of leadership, character, citizen, citizenship, and fitness. Um, and they do that by kind of hitting these different methods. Um, one of the greatest parts of this program, which is um, 11 through 17 years old, is this program is entirely youth led. Um, and so the older kids that have been in this program for quite some time, um, they start leading the younger ones that are coming mm -hmm. into the program. Yes. Um, I've had many chances to sit in on Eagle Board or reviews and committee meetings. And these young kids, you're talking 11, 12, 13, 14 years old, will go and sit in front of a, a panel just as yourselves and present their budget, their plan, the leader guide, so that they can get approved to go on an outing or activity. And that's really where they build those leadership skills and that confidence. Uh, so that's our Scouts VSA program. Not sure if you know a lot about Sea Scouting or maybe, but we do have that program. Um, this is a COVID program. Um, and this is really for the ones who really love aquatics and like to be out on, on boats, sailing boats, uh, even kayaking, canoeing, anything on the water. Um, they really enjoy that. So we do have that available. We have a very infamous um, a camp. It's called Sea Base out on the Florida Keys. So they do get to go out there and have a great time. Um, oddly enough, we have a couple ships here in Arizona. Uh, <laughs> so they actually, they'll go to Catalina Island. Um, they'll go out here in the lakes and spend time in much in California as well. So um, a little bit of fun there. Um, our most popular program for our elementary school kids is our Cub Scouts. Um, this one is parent led um, for many reasons, but this is where they really start to learn just the foundations of scouting. They get introduced to the law and the oath um, and get to do some really fun activities. STEM, Pinewood Derby, that's a lot of fun. A lot of people remember the Pinewood Derby as adults. Either they're really happy about it or they're still salty about it. Um, but the kids have a lot of fun. They get to carve their own car. They get to weigh it put weights on it and see how fast they can do uh, go down the track. So um, Cub Scouts is is uh, entirely family involved. So we encourage families to come out um, and join their Cub Scouts at events. And so if a Cub Scout is signed up and we have a camp uh, outing, we encourage them to invite their entire family. Um, they don't have to be signed up, but we want that family engagement because we know that uh, families who engage with their children, um, you know, they're that are emotionally regulated and things like that as they grow up. Uh, one of the uh, programs they might not be familiar with as well is exploring. This is a career um, guided program, and this is really for our youth who want to explore certain careers. And so they get these hands-on opportunities. And so for example, uh, we have a exploring post with Falcon Field Aviation, mm -hmm. um, and the kids get to go um, and learn everything about aviation. They get to go in the planes, they get to go up in the planes, we can even get them certified to fly if that's what their interest is. And so it's really a career exploration. Um, oftentimes you'll see a kid who sees NCIS and says, mom and dad, I wanna be, and I wanna be a detective. <laughs> And uh, so we pair them up with the local sheriff's department, and then they realize it's not what I see on TV. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I've been through the same myself. Um, but it's really the opportunity to explore what the career is and what the career isn't. Um, and so that's our exploring post, and we can do that with hospitals, fire departments, anything that they're interested in, um, we can get them plugged in. 
Um, and this is venturing. This has been fully co ed since 1998. Um, this is high adventure, a lot of fun, not really focused on the badges or the loops or the regalia. It's really just they tailor it to high adventure. And so um, they'll have venture crews that just love rock climbing or rappelling, and that's what they focus on, and their trips are, are geared towards going on things like that. So that's our venturing program. That. Um, so we've done a little bit of research and we've seen um, the results of scouting. Um, our scouts who are in the program have, have a higher rate of cheerfulness, helpfulness, obedience, kindness, uh, hopefulness, and trustworthiness. And so we have seen um, through evidence based that over time that our kids that join the program, um, it really does change their lives. And just a little bit about here at the local council in Arizona. So we're kind of like a franchise. Um, so nationally, we're uh, that's in Texas, or from Dallas, Texas. That's the national council. But if you kind of picture like a McDonald's, I think they're based out of Chicago. The headquarters, you have franchises. Well, councils have the same across the board. Um, and so our council here serves just about 6,000 youth. Um, entirely, we have 32 paid staff and the rest are entirely adult volunteers. Um, we have about 3,000 of those volunteers um, helping consistently run our program. Man, that looks good. Yep. Um, yeah. We have, a, well, we have a four Yeah. We have a merit badge. We took an award after the. Uh, yeah. yeah. So we have uh, four camp properties. We have a local one here at the Herd Scout Pueblo, which is up at South Mountain. Um, kids get to go up there frequently. We have shooting sports out there. They can go camping. Um, our most popular camp is Camp Geronimo for our troops. So 11 to 17, they'll go up there. Uh, many times of the year, but our most famous time is summer camp. They get to go up there without mom and dad for a week. They have a blast, really learn a lot, really learn how to get over that homesickness if it's their first time. That's always um, an interesting thing to see an obstacle that they overcome, again, instilling confidence. Um, but Camp Geronimo is a lot of fun. It's very old, so there's a lot of history tied to Camp Geronimo, so it's very beloved. We have Camp RBRC, that's our Cub Scout camp. It's, it's a lot easier to access. Um, it's right along Christopher Creek up in Kaysen. And so the kids get to be in about a foot of water barefoot. They're hunting for crawdads, having a great time. Crawdads is actually an invasive species up at the camp. And so we encourage them to catch them um, for free. And so, yeah, they have a great time. We have water rockets, all kinds of great stuff. Um, and then we have um, Camp Raymond, which is up at Flagstaff, I'm sorry, Williams as well, that's open. Um, and also some people don't know, but our camps are also open to non-scouts. And so um, if your families wanna go up and, and go camping and check out the camps and um, rent some of the cabins out, that's absolutely possible. Um, one of the lines that I will read line by line, I'm not a slide reader. Um, but it is important because we've actually done a lot of research and partnered with a company, a research company called Lavage um, to get a feel for what parents are looking for um, for their child. And so through the research, um, this is what, what we came up with and it's in scouting every new adventure, every camp out, every badge is a chance to learn new skills and gain new experiences. Scouts and their families are welcomed into an inclusive community that encouraged them to try new hobbies serve the community and explore outdoors while learning about the world around them. If you ask the scouts, um, they probably won't say this, but if we read this out to a volunteer, it's like, yeah, that's exactly what scouting does. When we talk about leadership and we talk about scouting, they often think about that leadership, I'm sorry, that outdoor component, right? The camping, but it's in the experiences where they learn and build that confidence you know, if they've never built a fire before or if they're learning how to orienteer, which is how to get around um, the wilderness um, without a compass, you know, often in the failure, we learn the most. And so um, that's kind of a, a big part of the, um, the program here. 
I'm not going to jump into this just because this is a little bit more company face. There's a couple things that I wanted to update you guys on on the council that we're introducing um, and how to get a little bit more plugged into our schools. So that's really a focus is to bring awareness and to invite more kids into the program. And one of those efforts is called Adopt a School. Um, and so what we do is we will um, have a meeting with the principal and we essentially partner that school with a PAC or troop and they'll have they'll do two to three service projects for the school per year um, and so the basis of that is so that one we can provide service um, to the school because oftentimes they need that so that can be um, painting or bookshelves or whatever a school might need maybe maintenance outside um, so we partner up with them and it gets like um, the principals and the teachers the chance to see our scouts on campus chance to see them out in uniform but also the chance for kids to see them as well and see if that's something they'd like to do um, and try and provide that good service um, before i end off there's another launch that we're doing called mesh this is a mental health program that we're launching across the entire staff our camp staff and our scouts alike um, as we know in our society mental health continues to be a conversation as it should and so we're launching a program like a first aid mental health training on how to train our camp staff because they're all young kids, um, how to train our staff and professionals and volunteers, how to tackle certain mental health issues that they see across the board um, through your youth, through their youth. So um, that's going to be launching next month. So that's something I'm, I'm very excited about. It's one of my passions. So I'm actually leading that training. Um, but before I, I hop off this, at the stage here, do we have any questions about the program? Yes. We talked a little bit about uh, number of members and trends. Are things growing? Are things kind of flat? Yeah, that's a great question. So we have 6,000 youth. We had 60,000 youth before COVID. Um, and before, um, it's known that the LDS Church exited their way out of the program to do their own program. Um, and so that brought on quite a, quite a few issues in terms of we lost a lot of youth, mm -hmm. which means we lost a lot of funding, but also have recognized that probably shouldn't put our eggs in one basket. Um, and so now it's forcing us to really um, interact with the community as we should promote the program in the way that um, promotes what we want to do is, is be diverse. So we want to go in underserved communities um, and affluent communities alike. And so that's been um, a consistent growth point for us. Happy to say that over the course of three years, we're up in growth in Cub Scouts every year. That's yep. Right. Yep. Um, and then 3,000 volunteers, adult volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. Abby, would you relate to the group uh, what we found out when we visited Mesa West last year and you asked if there were any people spouse in the group, do you recall? What they said, what they did. They all stood up. Is that right? Well, there were two two Rotarians at that meeting uh, who had been Eagle Scouts. Each of whom had three sons who had been Eagle Scouts. Oh yeah, uh, pretty amazing. It is, yeah. And I think everyone's been um, touched by scouting in some sort of way. Um, I will tell you from a professional standpoint. Uh, and maybe as business people as yourselves, there's probably not a resume with the Eagle Scout on there that goes across your table and goes in the trash. So it holds weight, it holds merit. It's a huge honor. Um, but yeah, any any other questions? So this year, Rotary International, our our theme is create the hope of the world. Yeah. And Jordan McNally, who is our president. Uh, his big initiative this year was bringing mental health, or like what I, I like to call it, brain health. Yay! Right? Yeah. Uh, to the forefront. Sure. So it's something that our club is excited to become a part of and to do more in our community. We, yeah. We want to be able to talk to the town of Gilbert. We want to be able to talk to council. We want to be able to help with your new initiative that's coming in next month yeah how do you see and again i know that we're spit, spitballing here. Yeah, go ahead. 
how could the Gilbert Rotary Club be beneficial? How can we assist, not just monetarily, but how can we as a club help you and volunteer our time and talent to your initiative? Um, that's a great question. We're always looking for volunteers. Uh, but also, it's a lot of the connections. So if you know of schools, if you know of churches or organizations or um, other 501c3s that you think might benefit from a PAC or a troop being started there, or a school that might want to be adopted so we can provide community service, um, that's a huge help for us right there. Because um, part of my job is um, to inspire our field executives like Mary Kate to go out and meet with people like yourselves and see how we can partner with you. Um, in terms of the mental health thing, I'm excited to hear what what you guys have going on for that. Uh, well, and our, our district has created a new task force that Debbie and, and Pat are also on, and we're getting some things going there. Uh, there's some classes and trainings so that, uh, again, not at a master's level, but to be able to see some of those signs and other people to be able to sit down and have conversations. We're going to be starting to grow that. John. Yeah, I kind of think of where Rotary is in the seed planting stage. Sure. Of trying to get awareness. I love and, that. And so an opportunity maybe to connect with somebody at the district, maybe attend one or two of the sessions. Yeah. A, meet some people, know some names and get a sense of where we are in that, I will say, initial steps of the journey. Yeah, absolutely. And and to your point, um, when you say not at the master's level, I, um, I gave a brief course um, in one of our planning conferences, and it's, it's not learning how to be a therapist. It's learning how to listen and be an ear. Oftentimes, people who are going through a tough time, whether that's just a moment an hour or they're having a consecutive, they just want someone to listen to. Um, and it's kind of recognizing yeah. those those things. And so I'm I'm excited to see what, yeah. yeah. What's involved in adopting a school? Because some of the schools that like the uh, polio dependence mm -hmm. how to want schools. Yeah. And so what are you envisioning uh, is involved for adopting a school? Um, there's no requirement, really. Um, we meet with the principal. Um, Mary can actually have two meetings this morning after this with principals. And we kind of go through the adoptive school document, which is really the local pack or troop agreeing to partner up. That's an agreement to provide a few service projects per year. So some of our scouts attend uh, at the school carnival, do paint projects and stuff. We do scouting for food. Um, so that's where our scouts go and collect tons and tons, and I mean tons of, of food for the needy. Um, so that's a drive we can instill in the school. So it's it's really anything that the school needs uh, within reason, right? Because we're a nonprofit, so we don't have, our units don't have dollars to put into a project. But if there's something that needs maintenance or sprucing up or, you know, our Eagle Scouts have built friendship benches. So if someone needs a friend, they'll sit down. If someone sits down next Things like that, um, those are things that we can certainly help out with, sprucing up a garden, creating a garden, things like that. There's no requirement. It's just if the principal wants to do it. Yeah. Excuse me, I'm going to have to step away for one final thought. Uh, are you at all working at the district and then getting a, a referral to a particular school, or are you trying to hunt this on school at a time by just kind of cold calling? Um, you know, I'm proud to say that I have relationships with most of the schools in my area, which is, the, um, it's Queen Creek, Mesa, Gilbert School mm -hmm. District, so the big main ones. Um, and so I can really just approach, oh, the, approach the principal. Yeah. There are some that require the superintendent visit. Um, that's a, a double-edged sword right and the there. the doors can be open, but red tape can exist. It could so, really yes. close the doors yep. if they say yep. no. Um, but that hasn't happened yet, sure. so, so yeah. I've got one last question, Abby. The Queen Creek Club is all about resilient kids, right? And getting the community around uh, working with kids and making sure that our, our kids are, are growing up right. 
yeah, you know, we're doing a lot here in Gilbert, but Gilbert right now has got this huge black guy with our youth, right? You're hearing it all the time on the newspapers and so on. Things are you talking about the goons? We're we're talking about you know issues that are that are not just playing out in the papers, but that are yeah. in the schools as well. Yeah, you know, the underground fight clubs and things like that. What are the scouts doing in the Grand Canyon Council to talk to the scouts in that area? Are you promoting things like see something, say something? Oh yeah. What how how do you as leaders in the scouts take on something that is in the newspapers now and bringing it back to your to your troops? Yeah, that's a good question. And it's a long term seeing result, if that makes sense. So our, our scouts, I will tell you, I meet with a lot of teachers, a lot of principals, and they always say the ones that are scouts are the less problematic and have the less the less frequent behavioral issues because they know how to conduct themselves. And so to answer your question, are we, every leader is responsible for their troop. Yes, there's conversations. If you see something, we have a really strict anti-bullying policy. Um, and I will tell you that the leaders that work with the youth are extremely kind, but they don't pull any punches. There's discipline within that that troop or that pack. So as they grow, they recognize and they know how to behave themselves. Not to say we don't have problems, but I, I'm not sure if there's a, a direct answer to that. I just didn't know if it was something that was brought more to the forefront that they kind of are talking a little bit more about what's going on. Yeah, and I think what, part of what they're doing is reinforcing the program. I think some of the reasons we're having so many of these issues, like I'm a 90s kid, so I had that pleasure of knowing what it was like to not have the social media and the technology, but also knowing what it's like to come into the technology with the black and green uh, fonts and all that stuff. Um, and there's a continuous conversation of why are my kids so dysregulated, dissatisfied, um, forming groups like that. And I think it's really just from a therapist perspective, so we're, we're seeking a bond. We're just not seeking the right bond. We're not regulating ourselves in the right way. As humans, we are built to have relationships and, de and real connections. And a screen is artificial intimacy. It's not <laughs> legitimate intimacy, right? That you get something from conversation and looking someone in the eye. Our kids now have struggled with that, not to their fault. It's using the technology we've introduced, but I think I think it brings on a lot of great opportunities, but also a lot of problematic issues where some crazy things are happening. And so I will tell you, I will tell you that um, if, if every kid was in scouting, they would be better off for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Abby, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate you. We have your certificate yes. here. Wow, great. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. We're going to have Donna's yeah. going to take a photo here. Okay, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, go, girl. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Always good to have you here. And well, thank you. Well, and I'm gonna expect to see you, you know, become president oh, at the gosh. Mesa Club here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's out there. Yeah. All right. We want. Yeah, we definitely want to make sure that you can eat your cold breakfast. So thank you for yeah. for that. Uh, the last thing that I had on the agenda was simply to have a discussion about um, CLA. Uh, we, we met, well, let me back up. We met last week over at OSO. There was a group of us that had gone. Uh, it was a nice, a nice visit. We had the Queen Creek Club represented. We had the Gilbert Club represented. We had Camelback Crossroads represented and we had some links. Uh, we had the opportunity of watching uh, Levi uh, from the Camelback Crossroads receive his very first Paul Harris Fellow. Very, very awesome. Uh, I was able then the next day to send the pictures over to Susan Bethel, who is a member of the Kingman Club, who about three weeks ago was diagnosed with 
at like an immediate onset of leukemia. And she's been hospitalized since. Uh, she's gone now. She, yeah, I think she, she came from yesterday. Uh, Sue, if you've never met her, she only stands about this tall. <laughs> well, okay, this tall. She's still shorter than me, and I'm short. Uh, she is a, a dynamo, and she's always been on the committee who has helped put together all the district conferences. Uh, so I was able to have a nice conversation with her and send her her pictures of Levi getting his Paul Paul Harris fellow. So. Uh, keep her in your thoughts and prayers. She still has a long run ahead of her, uh, but she is on the coast. So we did that on Thursday, but the Saturday before we had Club Leadership Academy. And for those of you who attended and for attending for the very first time, Penny, you went to Rotary Leadership Institute level one while yes. we were there. Yes. What were your thoughts? Overwhelmed for women. It's just so exciting. <laughs> I, I've known a little bit about Rotary from the past, but of course couldn't qualify or anything else. I didn't even know I could qualify now. And when um, Steve invited me, it was like God was working <laughs> in my favor. And um, I just, I'm ready to keep learning and growing and doing everything you guys have done yes your session went from what 9 a.m until 4 p.m and so that was the first level of of the institute a lot of a lot of foundational you got to learn about the foundation you got to learn about grants you got to learn about how how the the district works and all of that good and that'll come along as yes so much absolutely <laughs> Pat, Miss President Elect, uh -huh. this was your first CLA. Yep. What were your some of your takeaways? Well, I physically took away because I got to clean out all the tables. If you remember, <laughs> I got that. Um, our our incoming Miss Michelle Holcomb mm -hmm. has a um, sort of a little bond with yeah, with not mine, not mine. Some of them are. are <laughs> magnets um because when you go through life especially in rotary and other clubs it's not my club it's our club to be successful everybody has to participate everybody has to have a and when i was at the president-elect training she handed these out to our district and um, i walked around with it uh, amongst my other pins and and uh, the vendors stopped me and said what does that mean? What is this not mine? What is this mine thing? And so I thought that was interesting because the vendors have experience with rotary. And so this toggled their attention. And so um, I asked her, could, could I, I said, I need to buy them. Could I get some for our club? And she said, what's up with the tables when we were done? <laughs> so I did. <laughs> so if you need more, I got plenty of you guys. And what sessions did you attend? Um, I don't even remember. Um, well, I done the grant one beforehand, right? So um, let's see. I I went to the one where they talked about the uh, just all the opportunities within the district. Mm -hmm. We talked about oh, the first one. I don't even remember. Yeah, they were cool. There were but there were a lot. There were a lot of them because it, it was from like eight right. to four, right? <laughs> Right. Um, and it was it was kind of nice because uh, you got a mix of everybody. And they combined a couple of them. I mean, I think the one in the morning was was uh, generally how to do uh, public relations, um, and just there's a plethora of things you can you can do. It's not just sending out a, a PR thing saying, "Look, we are here." Um, and so it was just it was it was really good because uh, unlike pets, where we were sort of. Mm -hmm. Um, and you couldn't really spend much time other than at lunch or the meals with others. You, you kind of sat with different groups of people each each session. So I got to kind of meet others. Miss Debbie. Oh, I'll oh. say this this is really cool because in my old district, we needed this because mm -hmm. our emphasis was on leadership. Mm -hmm. It's not 
my year as president, my, my year as governor, it was the year I served at. So I want to send this to my whole district to the challenge. I got more to you, yeah. Debbie, you said it. Yes, I did. And actually, I took the grant once just to be your double covered on that. Mm -hmm. And I was very pleased because I've gone to some in the past and they uh, made it a lot easier to sit through than it was a lot. It was just a whole lot better than what we had in the past. And so I did the two sessions on that. Um, I went to the one on fundraising and um, I've got notes on that at the house. So, um, are we going to regather our fundraising? Yeah. yeah. Kurt, you you presented at CLA this year. Yes. So imagine yes. waiting for lunch and having to listen for an hour about dialogue. <laughs> that was my topic. Uh, in a nutshell, my point was this. Uh, every Rotarian unites and takes action to create lasting change. If you are a Rotary leader, there are some additional things you do. One of them is becoming familiar with all of the governing documents. Uh, internationally, they're trying to talk to us as a club about what's important to Rotary. Uh, as a club, we create bylaws and we have a constitution. and. And the leader, at least, should know what those documents uh, say. And uh, almost every club is outdated, hasn't amended anything, hasn't read anything, hasn't looked at anything for 10 years. But uh, not our club. I asked them, well, no, not our club. <laughs> I asked them, uh, how many of the bylaws say 10 days notice of a change? And almost everybody raised it. It's 21 days. It's been 21 days now for four years. Uh, so I told them how to make the changes, how to go about uh, voting on them, and, and we covered some other interesting, uh, to me at least, uh, interesting aspects of how you uh, govern a local club. So uh, demystifying the bylaws was my goal. I think I accomplished at least part of that. All right. Uh, we are up at the top of the hour. Oh. Yes, sir. Your presentation? Uh, well, my presentation went very well. Uh, my presentation was about is your website a one or a 10? And I was able to talk to them about social media and about, uh, about uh, optimization and how to take pictures and what it looks like. And hey, don't just look at it from your, from your computer. Make sure you're looking at it from a tablet. Making sure you're looking at it from your phone. When somebody puts contact me, is it go? Who does it go to? Does it go to anybody? Does it just sit in in you know the atmosphere? So yeah, it was really good. We had about five or six different clubs reach out to us afterwards to have the, us look at theirs and see how that's going to go. Uh, so yes, it was very successful. But thank you for asking. You said thank fundraising. you for doing it. Yes. Yeah. As you say, your website, it works because I showed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Debbie, Jim, are you our program person? Yes. Could you talk to Will about coming and talking to us about junior uh, achievement? Yep. Oh, of yeah. course. Excellent. That's a given. Right? Yeah. 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 That's, that was me waiting party. there. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Is there anything else for the good of the order? Mr. Will. Uh, I hate to do this. But I want to make a correction. You mentioned that some of the other Rotarians were Eagle Scouts and that they were. Oh, they, they still are, are Eagle Scouts. Awesome. Once you're Eagle Scout, you're always an Eagle Scout. Like right? Like a Rotary. Right? Like a Marine. Like a Marine. I love it. And red lights. Yeah. And with that, we are adjourned. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 Y